Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Flying with Mike. We're up here in Cape Cod, uh, Massachusetts. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Again, excuse me there. Uh, we're up in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, getting ready to head to Burlington, Vermont. This is the C90 Mod 6 that you can find on Fatsim. And, uh, yep, we are preparing to fly. We have J drums flying along, too. Uh, so this ought to be fun. We're up on Vatsim, so if you also want to join in, feel free to, folks. We're, uh, the water is warm, as they say. I'm just getting a couple things uh, tweaked on my uh, flight, namely the flight plan. So bear with me here a second. Um, it was in uh, kilograms for the uh, C90, and we can uh, fly this in the uh, regular U.S. pound uh, weights. All right, so let's do that and flight plan. Oh, please. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, okay. Cool. We'll do that. Close. Disconnect. Connect. Connect. There we go. Flight plan. Fetch. Hey, look what look what happened. All right, so we'll file that. And right now there is no uh, center up here, so we're going to be leaving Cape Cod here momentarily and heading over to Burlington, Vermont. Now I want to keep J drums up too late, you know, they have to work in the morning. I'm at least thankful I not have to work. All righty. So as you can see, there's the uh, C90. It's basically the default version with a couple of changes. There's winglets on it and a beautiful paint job on the outside. <clears throat> so we step inside, he says cautiously, whoa. And of course, Bruns decided to drop in right on top of us. Uh, is there a chance you can slide to a different spot there, Solo One? If not, I will. Yep, I will. And away I go. We'll get a new flight going here and there we go. Hopefully he stayed where he's supposed to be now. I don't think I... Did I move? Now I don't see him, so I have no idea where he is. There he is, way over there. Okay. Well, heck. All right, so we're in the plane now. Let's go ahead and bring the door up. Uh, one thing we're going to go over here kind of quickly. I had to also do a new flight plan to get it, like I said, into pounds. Uh, zero fuel weight. Uh, let's just do it the easy way. Uh, we're going to be putting on a payload of four people, no cargo, 800 pounds. Get that taken care of here real quick. 800 pounds. And fuel uh, is 1245, it looks like. Yep. 12.45. Done. Fly. And we've got, uh, let's see what's going on here. The Stretchy Leo just subscribed. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Second one today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, hopefully things out at the airport are going well. 
but thank you for the subscribe. Okay, moving the aircraft along. Hopefully you got your computer, by the way, up and going there uh, so you can get that flight in. So we need to get this aircraft powered up and get going here. So basically to do that, let's get rid of, well, do I even think I got us fueled, got us that. Uh, we're doing this kind of on the fly, folks, so bear with me here. Get my checklists rolling here because I'm thinking I'm going to miss things if I don't. And this will get me ready for tomorrow's flight as well. Tomorrow we'll be flying up in Alaska from Anayak to uh, Russian Mission. And then I forget the uh, second leg. <clears throat> so two legs tomorrow, uh, just so you're all aware. Uh, 60 and 110, I think they are. And they should hopefully be in this aircraft. All right, so running through it real quick. Cabin doors are locked. Uh, we got the weight and balance. And the control lock is free. Parking brake is set. Oh, where are we? Pedestal, overhead panel. That's going to take a couple seconds. Just got to get each one of these turned on. And my apologies for it not being ready. On the fly setup uh, took a couple minutes longer than expected. And getting all of these turned up takes time. That's one thing I wish the uh, developer would uh, get these to like the default speed. Because they move a lot quicker in that one. Beyond that, though, it's a really good plane. You really got to watch when you put the power to it uh, for takeoff. You don't want to cram it to the firewall. You want to gently ease in. And if your throttle like mine has a stop, stop. Don't try to go past it or I guarantee a red line. And if you red line, I guarantee you're going to see fire out each side. Cool to some people, not something I want to see. All right, so we got all that on. That's on. Okay, we'll put these to between. Come back down. All right, so the lights are set. The oxygen set. Temperature mode off. That's right here, folks. Um, <clears throat> okay, condition levers. That's your fuel. You want those in cutoff. You want your props. Trying here. There we go. Want them full forward. Thrust right here. Just make sure it moves. And then uh, we're going to do our uh, fuel panel. So for the fuel panel, let's kick the boost pumps on. Battery switch. I'm up top here. You'll see the panel coming alive. Inverter, we don't need on it this time. Transfer pumps on, then off. Fire detection. Okay. And voltmeter, that's up here. We just want to basically make sure when we go to battery, 28 volts, and we have that. Okay. Let's go ahead, get her fired up once the signs are on. And we'll get the nav and the beacon spinning. Here we go, folks, starting the engines. And yes, we're doing it pretty down and dirty, but we're also making sure to get as much of this as possible. All right, so kind of getting it in a position so you can see. <clears throat> the difference between the old Microsoft stuff, I don't know about the new, the props don't start spinning when you click them on. Now we're looking for 20. And there it is. Go to low idle. We'll get a light off. Watch your turbine temperature. It'll go up above the red line, but when it comes back down, we don't want it going above again. At 50, we'll turn the starter off. Okay. Starter's off. Okay, we want to reset our generator. And now it's on.
Okay. Um, and now we'll go to high idle. That's why you want to make sure that is set. The parking brake. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn the anti-ice on to be safe. And may, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Bear with me a second, folks. Off, off, set off. There we go. It's turning over the left side. Again, we're watching our N1 or N2 fire up at 20, going to low idle. It'll continue to spin up, and we're watching all of our fluids and pressure levels and all go up. 8, 9, 50, there we go. Starter off. Okay. We are fired up. Any ice on for that one? Let's take that one up to high idle for now. And all of our stuff is good. And our engines are on. Now we'll turn the inverter on.
All right. So let's see here. Uh, just realized my mic was muted. Wow. Okay, well, I just realized. So here's what you'll do, Sketchy Leo. Come down here, move this to Bravo. Tango. And I'll just go backwards to get to Victor. It doesn't matter the direction you go, obviously. Finally, we put the final airport in here. Kilo. Whoop, Bravo. And pay attention, because sometimes they end up in weird places. I just kind of do this very quick sometimes. Especially this one. All right. Enter, enter. And, folks, that is all there is to it, and we're back. Now, to get the 430 in Ryan, all you got to do is move it up one. Boom. There you go. There you go. They're both set. We're ready to roll. And let's make sure no ETC. Boston Center came up. Hang on one second. While I'm waiting for a reply from our pilot with us here, I'm just going to get us somewhat set here. Because <clears throat> I may be coming offline. 33 Delta. Welcome aboard. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, feel free to come into the chat room. The water is warm, as they say. Hang on a second. Flash traffic from our other aircraft. Okay, I'm just getting my chat window opened up over here so I don't have to keep uh, flipping between the two. All right, so let's see here. What is center on? 1330. Of course, they're going to probably tell me, oh, you need to contact approach. That wasn't cool. Come on. Guess I deserve that. All right, we'll continue the uh, J fund to descend. UPS 2346 heavy. And while I'm waiting here to get going, let me get my frequencies set up here. Uh, frequencies for Boston are 1270. Burlington. 
1750. Okay, we're on the other side. Put 1750 in. Okay, and just in case he decides to go offline, I know chances are slim to none. But folks, if you're wanting to join in, we're heading out of... Uh, Cape Cod. Now, this is actually Kilo Hotel Yankee Alpha. It's, uh, what's the actual name of this airport for y'all? Um, Hy Hyannis Gateway Airport. Uh, Cape Cod Gateway is another name for it. So that's where we're starting out of. Feel free to join in. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and go offline because this plane... Really, I'm going to go ahead and go offline because this plane I can get really into some trouble with, with engine fires and all that. We don't need to do that today on VATSIM. So, my apologies. It's nothing against you, uh, uh, Boston, but the way engine fires and me on this plane happen, this is probably the better course. Okay, so all our radios are set up. The more I thought about it, the more I thought this might be the better course. Okay, so all that's set up after start's done. We're done with our checks. All we got to do is before takeoff, uh, enunciator pedo heat. And I got to figure out where we are on the airfield in reference to our departure run. Okay. And runway, well, let's get our winds again. And winds. K H Y A. Ah, I say that and look what happens. Uh, we don't have some toolkit going. Ha, ah, that'll help. All right, give me a second. That just takes a second to fire up. Yeah, we're batting a thousand so far. Okay, and we're just waiting for it to come connect. Should be doing that any second now. It just did. Then I'm going to get this on so I can better see my chat window. One of these days, I have got to find me a second monitor. Then I can get another stand and get this sucker positioned where I don't need all of these computers going at once. Okay, so let's do that. That. And update. Fly now. And let's see if that works now. I think we're supposed to use 1.5, but don't quote me on that. Quote that. Uh, 105, mile and a half visibility. Ooh, we're actually below. <laughs> I think we just dropped below. And uh, 300 on the uh, overcast skies. Very fun day, folks. Feel free to come out and join us. Also, folks, if you like the aircraft here, um, let me uh, pull a link up for you. Because, too, I'm going to need it tomorrow. Uh, C90. Here is the link to this modification that you can find over at X-Plane. Uh, it'll take care of uh, getting you going in this in this one. Now, the default works fine. 
he just modified this a, a, to more of what he thinks, you know, what he wants, but it's still good for all of us. Uh, I really like it. It just very, it can get very fun to fly. So away we go. Uh, again, if you like what you're seeing, feel free to click in to uh, follow. And uh, we would love to have you aboard. Uh, we have become an affiliate, so that is another option for you if you want to. So, transponder on. Uh, pedo heat. Keep that to the runway. Trim all the way down? No. How about set it up? There. All right. Parking brake off. Taxi lights on. We are moving. And again, give me a second here as I pull up charts. Got a long taxi I just happened to notice. Oh, wow. Oh, let's get going. We got to go up to runway one, five, or six. Let's go six. So that just happens to be right in front of us. All right, so we'll come out, turn on Bravo to Alpha to six. Okay, pretty simple. Let's do it. Gotta love these little airports. Not a lot to be written about how wide the taxiways and runways are. Hey, uh, November 43 X ray Sierra crossing runway 30 or 33, sorry. Again, 3023 on the altimeter. And since we're not on eight cars there, uh, J Drums, are you airborne or where are you hiding? In case we do ever come up, I don't want to run over you. November 43 X ray Sierra clear of uh, 33. Coming around the horn. Holding short, runway six. This would have been a fun flight on PazCon. Oh well. Too late now. Parking brakes on. Okay, so pedo heat now can go on. Stall warning on. Anti ice is on. Arm the uh, uh, auto ignition. Auto feather on. I'm sorry, armed. Strobes on. And uh, out of other thing to think. Okay, we are ready to go. No, I will stay clear of you. B, I'm easy to find. It's a good chance these engines are going to light off outside the cowling. I know, I'm just kidding, folks. Here we go. Cape Cod traffic, uh, Mac Air 572. 
Type King Air departing runway six. Okay, let's go to high idle. Now both um, handles going forward, that's part of his mod. The original, the default, does not do that, folks. Feel like a bucking bronco here, how these brakes don't want to work the way I've got it set up. Okay. Cruise altitude. Twenty six thousand? Uh no. We're gonna go on up to about uh, let's see, 10,000. Uh, we'll make it 9,000 for now. All right, landing lights on. Brakes off. Okay, and here we go. the stops on my throttle and rotating out gear up Okay, we're airborne. I'm going to go ahead and pull back to cruise climb. Okay. Let's go ahead and get that autopilot on. All dampers first. And flaps are up. Do not think it took. Did not. Okay. I'm going to come around. Take heading or not? No, it did not. Okay. Now, remember, I've got Boston set in here, so this is showing what I need to do to get on track. And here's our line to Boston. Okay, so click down two or three. Go nav. All dampers are on. And it might go over a little more to catch that uh, 
where it's better on for us. I'm going to go a little more. Trying to get us some speed here. Okay, we're airborne and on our way. And we're not a fireball. Proof's into pudding. Okay, that's a good climb speed. Like I said, we'll level off at 9,000. Props are right at 2,000. Torque is looking good. I'm actually going to try for a little bit more power. Try carefully doing this. She isn't going to go, so we'll just have to take whatever it gives me. Okay. And Okay, so we're going to have to nose down a little. Just so you all know, I was able to get it through. We're tinkering with the power to get it up there, but not over 100%. gonna have to fight it so that is why okay And this will take a little bit to work out. Okay, so we're getting her down to 9,000. Not a fireball yet. I've just learned to be very, I mean, these throttles, you really, with mine at least, you got to be 
really careful when you bump it. It's meant for the afterburner stage afterwards. Okay, so there's 9,500. I'm not coming out of it because if I do, I won't be able to keep her at about 96, 97 percent turbine. All right, now Boston is uh, 36 miles ahead of us. Uh, that is this right here. Hang on a second, I'm turning on my backup. Um, so Boston is now 35.8. Here comes 9,000. What I'm going to do hate when this happens. Okay. She'll work herself out here in a second, hopefully. As I make sure we're still on out. Hold. this She's really wanting to buck the, the altitude today. Okay, so we're cruising along. Coming up, see if the altitude select takes. And this ultimately, folks, is what I really don't like uh, about X-Plane, is this trimming issue that is just horrid in however they've got the simulation set up. Uh, but it'll eventually, I can get it to work out and get me level and speed stabilized so the trim can take but boy does it take a lot and it's not that hard in flying folks it really is not i've got 300 hours actual airtime it's really not as hard as x-plane makes it They make it seem like you're constantly trimming. Once the plane's trimmed, you're trimmed. And it's just sad sometimes how poorly this simulation handles that. But, um, you know, if they didn't come to Mike Schmidt and say, hey, well, how, how do we do the trim? You know, I'm hoping they found more qualified applicants, but wow. It can be a bear, and I think I'm going to finally get her in line here. Nope, it's going to buck the whole time. And I know it's all in the airspeed. And this has nothing, by the way, to do with the mod. So, if the creator, who I know lives in Europe, or at least I believe does, for some weird reason is up and running at 
to two, three o'clock in the morning. It's not your mod that's doing this. This is all X plane. So, but anyway, folks, now she's starting to settle in. I've actually never got this plane to cruise at 200 knots. That is awesome. So we are on our way. Uh, just crossed uh, Boston or coming up on Boston. Let's punch up a notch or two here. Yeah, there's Boston. And then uh, we're off to Burlington. So uh, we're at 96% turbine and uh, all the other figures are good. Uh, fuel flow looks good. Oil and temperatures. Let me get in here where it's a little easier to read them. They're green lined on both engines. That means we're in good shape here. All right, folks, sit back, relax. We'll enjoy and have a great time. Folks, if you like what you're seeing, should have flown the P1A. What's that one? Uh, Oh, the premium. Oh, dude, you'd already be there by now. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a good run for it. Yeah, she's still bucking a little bit, but... Well, folks, it really is that simple. Once the plane is settled into climb, trim it, and she s will s stay. Once you get her in cruise and settled, meaning you're in altitude, your speeds... All of that, she will, you can take your hand off the stick, folks. And we're not even talking autopilot, folks. We're talking plain old flying the plane. So that's where my troubles come in with this simulation. So now, conversely, Microsoft, I think, does more where the simulation takes care of the trim. By that I mean it doesn't matter what you do to the trim, it takes care of it, if that makes any sense. Um, so it's kind of almost the reverse. So, I mean, a couple planes that I've flown with on the Microsoft uh, FSX and prior trimmed, but you really didn't have to. X-Plane, if you don't trim, you will not enjoy your flight and that's and I don't mean trim like you normally should I mean you're over trimming the plane and it's ridiculous sometimes and we just saw it here so <clears throat> but anyway uh, Boston will be going by us here shortly and let's see what Sim Toolkit says for an ETA 46 minutes Looking at some toolkit, we got some nasty weather to the west of Burlington. That shit meets us as we get there, and we'll see how well X-Plane weather handles it. I know it scared the crap out of me into New Orleans a couple days ago. Uh, with a clap of thunder, I wasn't expecting. I don't remember seeing lightning. But, oh my goodness, reminiscent of when Active Sky would fire up. If you didn't know, it was in the uh, opening sequence of when you start Active Sky. Matter of fact, I used to use that opening sequence on a website that I started for an airline way back when. And if you want to listen into that, uh, there's a, a video up on Twitch on my site. It's the one uh, Milwaukee to New Orleans, 767. As we're progressing into through the approach to the runway, you'll come across it. 
So it impressed me. That was that was pretty good. Yeah, you know, I would like to, but there's a lot of things I would want on the airline that I don't know how to do now. So uh, right now, uh, I've got a couple ideas in the background, but they're not ready to come to the front forefront. Oh, and by the way, how did you enjoy the 767 at the airport today, Jay Drums? And since he's slow on typing... Just got pinged all over the place. Hang on a second. Oh, that don't look like a 767. That looks more like an F-22. There goes a 767. Very nice pictures. Very nice. I'm always curious now that we're in drawdown what some of these charters are doing. Wow, 16 F-22s. I know they didn't come to our side, so. That must have been the quote, quote, congested ramp over at Scott. Which is fine. They can be congested. We'll take the 7-6 any time. So, but we had a good time. Uh, let's see here. Oops, that wasn't what I wanted to bring up. Let's bring this up. And FR33D, thanks again for uh, checking us out. I hope you're enjoying uh, the flight. It's a King Air modification to the default King Air in X-Plane 11. Um, hope you've had a great day. is just really bizarre how we're just kind of up and down and you know what these airplanes don't do this folks let me ask you how many times on an airliner have you seen one do this if you did I feel sorry for that sick bag in front of you Yeah, really. Yeehaw is definitely how this plane is bucking around in the sky. There was, I mean, I was never the greatest trimmer when, of an aircraft when I flew back in the 80s. But I'm here to tell you, folks, my plane never did this, even with my hand on the wheel holding it. It stayed within 50 feet to 100, no more than 100 feet. And that was my hand, and I did my best to trim it. I never could get it to where I could fully let go, though, like my dad could. 
and I don't know where I messed up. But yeah, you can literally trim it. It'll stay right where you set it. Let your hands off to get check fixes, check calculations, get a cup of coffee, what have you, snack. And the plane would stay. Wouldn't do any of this bobbling crap. So... All right, so we got uh, Austin should be on the outbound side now. We're looking at 137 miles up to good old Burlington, Vermont. As far north as you can go in the United States before you have to speak French. Yeah, I think I'm kidding. Go up to Burlington. All right, 9,000 has seemed to be a pretty good altitude. I got a 60-mile uh, flight tomorrow in this and a 110-mile. Uh, so I think we've got a good plane. At first, I thought I might go to the caravan. But now that I've flown this, I think we might just do it in this aircraft. Is going to see. I'm sure Boston is still up. Yep, they are. Oh, looking even uglier on uh, what is this? VA Vitastic? Bat Sims. One site that I don't know if it ever really worked or not. Oh, wow, there must be a fly-in going on up here. Uh, looks like a bunch of Cape Air flights between Portland, Maine, and Bangor, Maine. Going between the two, approach to approach. All right, let's go ahead and Okay, so Burlington is 1:30 at 9. Time to take a look at some charts. Okay, so we're going to come in on runway 15. And just for your information, J Drums, parking is at the south end of the runway on the left side. General Aviation. Unless, of course, you feel gutsy and want to park on the Air National Guard side. <laughs> what are they going to do offline? I know. <laughs> All right, so... Oh, wow, they got an alert hanger, too. I didn't know that up there. Huh. Interesting. All right, so runway one five. What do we got to do? No, we got an ILS or an RNAV. Broken at 2600. 
Actually, you break red more than you think in real life. Uh, see if you know where I'm talking about. Okay, so there's Burlington. We could hook in. Let's see. What about the RNAV? Let's see. Okay, we'll catch you in a moment there, J Drums. Still got a little ways to go, and I'm working on my approach. Well. That's a possibility. I think I am going to fly the RNAV for 1-5. Y-U-N-U-D. Okay, folks, so how we set this up. Uh, actually, we'll see here. I think I've got time 119. And... We need to be at 32... we got a little bit of time. We're passing, by the way, Manchester, New Hampshire. There was a, a paper mill that I used to pick up there at a long time ago. Huh. Passing over an outer marker. Go figure. I forgot one thing in cruise we need to do. Okay, let me uh, just make sure I didn't forget anything else. It's... Okay, yeah, we're good. Okay, uh... Actually, okay, and I'll give him a few seconds to get back, and when he does, I'll uh, get into how we set up. I'm going to do the RNAV, but how you set up these GPSs for an approach. Sketchy Leo, hope you're watching. I don't know how this applies to the 1000 series uh, GPS, but this is the basics of how they work and how you can set your flights up. So. But again, we want to thank you for the uh, subscribing today for a month. We appreciate that. That is just downright awesome. And earlier today, Comp Thunder as well subscribed with Prime. Uh, again, we really appreciate that. So along with the long list of followers that came, that was just flat out unbelievable flight. Uh, man. Okay, getting a little squirrely up here. We're now 40. Oh, where's Boston? Let's switch over to ETV, hopefully. I'm on the right frequency. Seventeen point five zero. Yeah, we're still not close enough. Okay. Find that hard to believe, but whatever. And as you can tell, folks, uh, I got a lot to learn on this new role the stream has entered, which is an affiliate. Uh, thank you, Twitch, for that uh, uh, high honor, in my, my opinion. And it really goes to all of you out there, all of the 73 followers, two subscribers now. Folks, it's you, not me, that made this stream do this. You all did it by taking the time to watch, to ask, to talk, to follow, to subscribe now. 
to join Discord, to build this community up. And I want to say again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting us to this level. And we did it within nine months. Last September, we started this adventure. And uh, <clears throat> yesterday, we crossed over to the affiliate world. And today, I filed for it. And hopefully, uh, I hear back. I've you know, it looks like everything's through, so we'll see. Uh, but, man, it's just an, what an honor to have us at uh, <clears throat> Affiliate. Uh, and, and I just enjoy, and to me, this is my fun. I enjoy just flying, talking. If I can help somebody out, I really like trying. There's some things, like X-Plane itself, I have no clue about. But uh, Flight Sim, I may still know some things about. I haven't flown it since August. So, Microsoft FSX. So, I'm going to be extremely rusty going back to it. Can't wait till I fire up that PMDG 777 over there if I ever do. I'll be like, huh, what's this? What's this switch? <laughs> so... But no, folks, again, thank you very much. It's just such an honor to come in here, even after horrible days at the uh, airport and the job I had before, uh, to be able to sit here, fly, talk. It, it just, this is relaxation for me, folks. And we can kind of catch a little bit of the sun, a sunset, sunrise. Ooh, a little early. Out in the distance. Well, we're getting in to about 90 miles out. I probably could have gone up a little higher, but you know what? This is a good altitude. All right, so we got, uh, let's see what we have going on in the chat room. Okay. Okay, what was going on with my engines? I heard a rev up. Okay, you know what we're going to do? Let's go ahead, play it safe. As we are showing uh, one degree Celsius, let's just make sure there's no ice in the area. So I hit the boots real quick. Cameraman Pug 21, I see you out there. Welcome back. We're Oh, 87 miles out of our destination in the King Air. Oh, we're just doing a surprise run tonight. A friend of mine, Jay Drums, wanted to go up, so we're up. All right, give it about another... 
three or four minutes and we'll get the arrival plugged in here. It's not hard on this plane or any of the GPS units, folks, but I uh, know Sketchy Leo isn't 100% sure. Casey does want to fly the caravan. He'll have that for uh, 2020. Can't be much different. All right, why are we getting that? Let's uh, do this. Okay. All right, basically what that was saying, folks, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're beginning to run out of fuel from the tank. Uh, there's a couple of tanks that feed the engine. Well, transferring it is getting too low, so we turn off the transfer pumps. We keep the cross feeds on a little longer, and then that'll get the fuel, keep the fuel to the engines. Believe it or not, one of the first times I flew the default version of this, I ran out of, uh, I didn't run out of fuel, but I starved the engines and I couldn't get a restart. So I ended up crashing in the Alaskan wilderness. So we kind of pay attention, make sure, and this one's not that, I don't know enough about this plane, nor can I find a pilot handbook that guides me through the real world version, not the one that X-Plane and the Sim world has. Because that's what he's based a lot of it. This aircraft is on a real-world pilot handbook. So, he's done a great job, folks. I mean, yeah, I complained a lot, rightly so, with all the engine fires. But uh, he's done a great job uh, finding out if it was me, if it was the plane. And I think we're picking up Burlington now. Yes, we are. Okay, so, and the airplane has actually become a lot better. There's still a couple quirks that I run up against, the big one being the brakes. Um, there was one time, and it, and the big thing, I'll, I'll talk about the brakes more here when we get on the ground. We're not flying under an ACAR program, but we ran into some huge problems with ACARs and this mod that uh, I've found how to work around on my side. I don't know if he'll be able to. So, <clears throat> but anyway, ah, drums, you're back. So let's get into getting this uh, set up for the arrival. I'm going to be doing the uh, RNAV approach for uh, Burlington on runway 15, just to let you know. Okay, so this is the GPS 530. Now, Sketchy Leo, you're on a 1000, but probably in it, the same features are there, just not in the same places. So what we'll do is go to, uh, uh, nope, not VNAV, dummy, procedures. We're gonna click select approach by clicking enter. And here's all of the approaches. Now, I told you we're going to do the RNAV for 1-5, and it's a GPS approach. Scroll down to it. Click Enter. We're going to do the Y-U-N-U-D, as in Delta, transition. Enter. Then we're going to click Load. <clears throat> and if you want to see this real quick, I'll pull it up for you all to see. Uh... Maybe he says cautiously, there it is. And basically here is the arrival. So looking at it, looking at it, there we go. We're gonna be flying to YUND, which I could technically go direct, but we're gonna go to Burlington, then direct. And then we're gonna fly YUND over to Stave, the Foves, the Junal to the runway. Bowls, we got to be at 2,000 feet. So when we start our descent, we're going to come down to 3,200 feet. And then we're going to start a uh, 
at stave will start our descent down to 2,000. Now, technically, I believe this approach should have localizer glide slope, but like um, images you would see, don't count on it, folks. Um, still really rough on the edges as to what will do what. But across tops, your frequencies. Uh, next line is what is uh, our frequency that the GPS will tune in. Then our final approach course. And then what fouls, which is here, our initial, is what we need to be at. And then we'll glide, we'll come down the slope. It's a three degree slope. At, uh, we're going to come in at 120, so at about 600 feet a minute. And then uh, our uh, decision altitude is 526. So down here is our minimums, which is 526 and RVR of 20, or 24, sorry. So should we go missed approach? There, you got it right there for you. And uh, Malzer and Pappy's on the right hand side. Once we're on the ground, one fives right here. We'll get off wherever. Or I'm going to park in this one. Uh, but wherever. And uh, that's pretty simple. So close that out. Close that out. And close that out. All right. And we are now 60 miles out at about 40 or 30 or 40 to 50 miles uh, ballpark that's when we'll start our way down and i know some people out there uh wonder how do i figure that up well i just kind of look at my distance and what i'm flying and determine at about 50 miles we could drop six thousand uh, yeah about six thousand or so feet not a problem <clears throat> The bigger the plane, the higher up, then there's some formulas you can run, which we're not using here, so I'm not going to get into them. But we're now over Lebanon. I believe that's Vermont. I don't think it's New Hampshire. But that's as far north in the United States as I've ever been in the truck. Well, actually, is that where Bangor is? Because I have been to Bangor. Oh, no, I've been, oh, uh, Augusta, I've been to. So, yeah, we're about on level. So when we get up to Burlington, that's about as far north as I physically have been in the United States when I drove the truck. So kind of neat, you know, the little stats that I pulled up. Okay, and... Okay, so we got, uh, looking here at the DME, 54 miles roughly to go. To Burlington VOR, which is, while not on the field, very close to it. And let me see something here. And you can see there's the VOR, and that's where we're going to turn to head out to our initial fix. And all of this we'll also do while slowing and getting the plane into an approach uh, posture. So, but I do want to thank you all for coming out, joining this uh, special stream. This was not scheduled. This just, like I said, Jay Drums asked me, hey, want to go fly? I said, well... Uh, I asked the CEO first. That's the first thing you got to do in this situation, folks. And I was given it's up to you. That's always a you don't know how to take answer. If I say yes, am I going to get my buck handed to me later? Or what? Oh, we got somebody uh, following or doing something here. 
Welcome aboard Victory 35. We sure appreciate the follow. I hope you're having a great evening and uh, look forward to seeing you on uh, future flights. Uh, also, grab a plane. We're almost to landing in uh, Burlington. Now, granted, we're not on uh, Vatsim, but uh, sure love to have you in the air with us. And hello back to you. Okay, let's see where we are now. Okay, I am going to go ahead and begin setting up for my descent. Okay, so for the descent, we need to uh, set cabin altitude. We're not worried about that. We're below 9,000 feet. Well, at 9,000 feet. Let's get the altimeter. Latest information. Uh... Okay, so we're looking at 3015180. Well, there's only one runway there. 15 or 33. Three. Pretty simple. And 3015. Okay. Let her get back up to 9000, and then we'll start setting up for the descent. Cabin signs. Are never turned off. Sorry, peeps. And windshield anti ice. We're not going to worry about it, even though at three degrees could become a factor, but for now, we'll be okay. I'm going to do one other check. Let's make sure weather wise how we're looking. Don't sometimes like the weather presented on uh, Semilware. So I'll go to Fantastics if it'll load. And it did. All right, weather all around up here. But I think we're going to be okay. Alrighty. Okay, so it is time now to begin our descent. Okay, we are 38 miles out, so we're gonna go into descent. So what I'm gonna do is pull up the center down below us there, push descent. Come back to the screen and watch it set up as I start pulling the throttles back. you descending. There it goes. Oh, yeah, that would help. Okay, so we're going to maintain about 150 in the descent. Yeah, I forgot to set my altitude set. Ugh, thought I had done it already. Okay, but uh, as you can see, you can expect anything on the uh, stream here. And... Can make it come down even more. Pull more power back. I 
then that's to Burlington, by the way. I am going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and go direct. Just roll this up one. Click enter. And there it goes. Okay, so we're going to be skipping Burlington, BOR, still 30 miles out there, going direct to our initial fix, and then on to the RNAV. Okay. Give her some power. Slow our descent a little. Then I'm actually going to set us into vertical speed. Now, one thing if you didn't notice, folks, let me zoom in. Right here tells you we're set for 800 feet a minute. Okay? And it's going to maintain it irregardless of speed. Now, if I go to IAS, and I set it right now, it'll maintain this speed right here. The other thing is our decision height. That too is maintained down here. Let's go back. Usually you would set this on the ground. I'm going to set it for 100. Zoom in again. See how it says 100. Now we're 2,300, 2,400 feet above. You know, we're bouncing right there through some hills. So what I'm going to do to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and bring us to 5,000, which means we're going to have to kick in some power. Okay, let me look at my sectional. See what kind of heights we're looking at through here. That's a good call. 4,600 feet. 44. And as soon as we get a lot closer, say within 20 miles, we can drop down to 3. Okay. I think it said 32 was our initial. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and push us on over to descent. time BS.
I'm actually going to switch it into IAS. So we're going to hold about 175 as we cruise through the clouds. And I'm now going to turn on windshield. Actually, in this one I am going to go defrost. All right, folks, we are 20 miles out of uh, our initial. We're at 3,200 feet. And I'm going to maintain this airspeed right here. And yes, we're into clouds. Uh, broken 2600, so we're about 600 above. I'm just curious. Okay. All right, so let's see here. We're still holding right above 160. Minimum descents are 2,900 feet. Let's see how the chart reads. Okay, so we're looking good here. Okay, we're about to cross, well, a beam to Burlington VOR right here. What I'm going to do, 
kind of help us in on 1.5. Let's go ahead and pull up the ILS frequency. That being uh, 110 decimal 3. Okay, and go ahead. What I'm going to do is go ahead, set our frequency or a heading if we can. Nope, not going to let us while we're in GPS. Okay. All right, so we're 3,200 feet, 165. Um, and uh, nine miles. Okay, it's time to slow. Just a tad. I want to keep us right about 145 to 150. Then when we get on the uh, uh, base leg, if you will, we'll get her into the flap range. And the flap range, folks, basically is this white arc. So as long as we stay at 145-ish and to the blue line, we don't want to go below the blue line, we're good. To extend flaps and everything, we're 16 degrees Celsius. Okay, so there we go. We're right at the line. Now five miles. That is the St. Lawrence River Valley, I believe, ahead of us, folks. Like I said, you're as far north as you can go without talking French. Montreal. Mine? Well, you can see, uh, J-Drums, it's fair to partly crappy. All right, we should be making that turn here any minute. Let's take a look at it here. And what I am going to do is go ahead and uh, come off the GPS uh, when we come through the turn. Yeah, set my heading. Oh, maybe that's just the interstate. I don't think that's uh, um, the land of uh, Montreal. Okay, here comes the turn in a couple of seconds here. Okay, and we'll back this up. little bit of a power adjustment.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and get the lights on so when the wheels come out, they will be on. Okay. We are now in the flap range. Barely, but we're in it. And again, we descend to 22, 22 or 2,000, 2,000 around the curve here. Still got about five miles to go. And then we will be slowing this beast up. Okay, so. All right. Got my next altitude set. Power back a little more. Like it to be now around 140. Okay. My weather is clear. Well, la di da da. <laughs> All right, so there's 140. Just a smidge bit of power to add in. Okay, here comes the turn. Two seconds. Boom. What I'm going to do, get squared away here real quick. And we're going to down here, click descent. Got the runway in sight. 2000s are level off point, and we are slowing. Okay. Five miles from folks. And that's where we're at 2000, folks. Okay. Let's run through the before landing checks. Cabin signs on, prop synchrophaser off. Flaps will be as required. Landing gear at lights, pressurization props. Auto feather is armed. Okay. And lost the runway, there it is. Uh, props to high RPM after touchdown will be in beta. Okay, we're leveling off at 2,000, and I want to stay right about here. Three miles. I'm going to go ahead and set 1,000. Two miles. Airfields in sight. One mile. Descent. 
vertical. Folks, here come the props forward. First layer of flaps. Here. Pilot's killing me here. There we go. All right, we've got the plane because the autopilot was running us ragged. Okay, it's our pappies. Roger, clear to land, November 43, X-Ray Sierra. Well, that's funny, you lose your pappies. And we're on the runway. We'll check our landing rates here in a minute. Okay, wherever this is, we're gonna go. We got a runway here. Okay, we'll get off here.
Okay, landing lights off. Strobes already off. All right, November 43, Alpha Sierra. What am I anyway? I forgot what my call letters were. Oh well, that ain't gonna help either. Oh well. Yeah, we're clear of the runway. A quick run of the checklists here. Flaps up. Auto ignition can go off. Pedo heat can go off. Okay, ice light can go off, ice protection is off, minus <clears throat> anti-ice, <clears throat> okay, time to reduce electrics. Condition levers low, transponder on. Strobes off, trim set, okay. Let us continue. Okay, we'll taxi down golf and enter in here. Oh, wow, 227 feet a minute. We'll take it. Thank you, Mr. Trumps. I hope you had as good a landing as well. When do I put the gear down? Before I land. Trick question. Okay, here comes golf. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure where to park in here. You know what I'm going to do? Kind of wing it. Uh, let's go to this FBO. So set the brakes here, and we're going to finish up the checklist now. Uh, transponder, we've already done all of that. All right, so parking brake sent. Transfer pumps are already off. Crossfeed off. Oh, a 
went the wrong way with it. All right, so get all the radios shut off here first. Okay, auto feather off. Okay, we've been below for a minute. And fuel to cut off. We're just waiting for these to drop below 10%. Boost pumps can go off. Batteries and generators off. So generators. Battery switch. And we folks have made it in here. Uh, hope you all enjoyed the stream. Would run it backwards, but at night it might be kind of hard to see anything. So we're going to kind of forgo that. But folks, we uh, want to thank you for uh, flying with Mike. Always a pleasure to fly with you all. Like I said in the flight, uh, this is where I have my fun. This, I mean, I love just going up and just flying and having fun uh, with or without um, ATC. Although we had it uh, in this aircraft, sometimes it's smart not to use the ATC. It does tendency to catch uh, engine fires and all. And, you know, you don't need to be dealing with that and going, oh, I've got to declare an emergency when you're technically not supposed to on VATSIM. So, but anyway, we've had a fun time. Hope you all enjoyed the flight. Feel free to click follow if you'd like. Uh, it's, uh, that way you can catch when we're on again. Uh, tomorrow, by the way, around 1600 Z is the scheduled time. However, we'll check with the CEO. She does uh, work where she sometimes is uh, on phone calls and all, which pushes our departure time up, which that's no problem. But folks, from all of us here at uh, Flying with Mike, uh, we will thank the CEO for you there, Jay Drums. Uh, thanks again for flying with Mike, and uh, we will see you all next time out. God bless. Have a great Tuesday night.